Hi, it's Pat Gillis here, and I got a suggestion for you. I want you to try a parlor game, and I don't even know. <laughs> I've never played a parlor game in my life. I don't even know where I got that expression from. I don't even have a parlor, but at any rate, there's a, I, I guess I must have seen it in a movie somewhere, but anyway, I want you to try this game. Find a partner and convince that partner to do something with their limbs, like either, you know, raise their arms over their head, straighten their lengthen their arms, bend their knees, do, do something that's totally different. But the key is you can't tell them how you want them to do it and you can't d demonstrate it. You just have to get them to do those things just by touching them and seeing if you can convince them that way. I think that what you'll find is that that is a lot harder than you think and it kind of gives you a new appreciation for how hard it is for the horse to understand what it is that we ask of him. You know, and if you add to the horse's experience, you're also adding in that he may, depending on his trust issues or his age or his level of training, he may also be in a situation that makes him pretty nervous, right? And yet here we are asking him to do all these things. I think, like some, sometimes I think to myself, you know, because horses are kind of, they're everywhere in our lives, right? And if, even if we didn't grow up with horses, we probably read about them in books or we saw them on the TV or we saw them in movies or something. There's a sense of, they're very familiar to us horses, right? We feel like we kind of get them on some level. And I think reciprocally, we think the horse kind of gets us on some level. And, and it's possibly true that he does to some extent, but he's still an animal that's quite different than we are. And we're bringing him into our world, right? So he's now having to figure out what it is that we want. And I think, I don't know, like I suspect that if I, I don't know, if I had like an armadillo or something that I had to train, I would probably be looking for help to train an armadillo because I don't know anything about armadillos. And yet I think somehow people feel like because the horse is so familiar that, you know, he's just going to get what it is that I want him to do. And I don't think that's necessarily true, which is why I love that parlor game or whatever you want to call that game. That's why I like that game, because it does make you stop and reflect on how difficult the task at hand is. That the horse has to understand something that's completely outside of anything he would normally do on his own. And, and, but, and, do, and you have to teach him that without being able to speak his language or to demonstrate this for him. I, I honestly, I think if we came down from another planet somewhere, having never seen this, we'd all be sort of stunned at the fact that horses that are so different than we are, have a completely different worldview than we do, and yet they partner with us in such a perfect, like an amazing way, and they're capable of doing so many things. I think if we were from another planet, we'd be in awe of it. <laughs> and we should never lose that sort of sense of awe that horses can do that for us. So in the next few weeks, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go through a few of the sort of basic elements of training that we use at my farm. Um, I'm not saying it's the be-all and the end-all, but it is, it's worked for us for the last 35 years. So. so if you're watching this anywhere besides at our blog, which is at ismyhorsehappy.com, go on over there, scroll down, leave a comment. Let me know if you've ever kind of been in awe of the fact that horses can figure out what it is that we're asking of them. And let me know any training issues you have, and I look forward to seeing you next week where we'll go through some of our sort of training rituals that we have at my firm. So remember to thank your horse, and we'll see you next week.